And now that we're recording this, I'm going to turn things over to um, the ITA president, Frank Mervin. I just would like to uh, welcome everyone for being on today and uh, emphasize that the partnership between the Township Association and the state of Indiana, and specifically DGLF and West Bennett, is extremely important. Uh, we are going through unprecedented times during a national crisis, and the township trustees are part of the, um, the group, or I want to say with great humility, on the front lines of being able to handle the economic side of things. So we have um, unprecedented amount of unemployment, and many people are turning to us for assistance. And now more than ever, it's the strength of our partnerships and our relationships that allow us to go forward to be able to benefit the community. And as township trustees, we know um, that we are always uh, governed and we always wanna do what is right. Uh, and so this partnership and being able to communicate with DGLF is something that is vital to how we evolve going forward. And I just wanna point out um, the expediency in which the state of Indiana was able to uh, give us the ability to operate virtually and the way that DJLF and the state of Indiana and West Bennett responded to our needs very quickly uh, within that first week to make sure that we had the tools necessary to be able to continue to service our populations. So as we go forward, uh, let's ask and, and be as knowledgeable as possible and let's develop a strategic plan that allows us to be able to uh, be safe for ourselves and for our families and be safe for our clients and uh, see what Wes Bennett has to say and answer some questions. And I just want to reiterate again that uh, only in my, I'm speaking for myself within my township, we've partnered up with, I've partnered up with Kim Robinson, the Calumet Township Trustee. We've partnered up with the food banks. I know that, um, that many uh, trustee Clancy has partnered up and he has a food uh, his own food bank going on and we're doing everything we can to service as many people as we can and partner up with the workforce development to make sure that unemployment uh, is being processed properly and and these are the times uh, during this crisis that people are going to rely upon township assistance more than ever and we have to be able to have a strong commitment in our community and a strong presence, and we have to have strong relationships with uh, the faith-based community, and, and now, like we mentioned, with the state of Indiana and DJLF to be able to allow us to do our job. Um, at this time, I believe, if I uh, am correct, I'd like to introduce Wes Bennett to be able to present and, and answer those questions that are vital so that we can continue going forward and servicing our populations that need us most right now. Well, thank you very much, uh, President Mervin, uh, Trustee Mervin. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, for having us today. I want to welcome you uh, along with your Executive Director, Trustee Driscoll. Um, she is she has been uh, remarkable to work with, and 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 I appreciate not only her leadership as well as your leadership, uh, but that uh, the, the due diligence that she has done and in, in helping set this up. Tamara, appreciate you as well and, and the Purdue University uh, allowing us to use the technology. You've got some uh, wonderful staff there and we appreciate it very much. So welcome to everyone. Um, on behalf of the governor and his team and, and uh, DLGF, um, we want to thank you for uh, all your efforts, and I would echo exactly what uh, Trustee Irvin has said. Uh, you, Oops. your tough circumstances, and so we want to be here in which to uh, to facilitate uh, what you have to do at the local level. So, uh, the stories from around the state uh, are remarkable, uh, as Trustee Irvin has just mentioned, um, all across the state. Uh, not only are they remarkable, but they're heartwarming and, and, and they raise the hope of, of all the citizens of the state. And um, I, I just uh, am fascinated and, and just really heartfelt uh, thank you to everyone out there that's, that's doing a remarkable job. Masks, uh, getting PPE, uh, food banks, donations, uh, et cetera. Uh, we're going to see a, a pretty um, 
we're going to see a, a very disappointing, but um, we understand that, that the tomorrow's um, unemployment figures are going to be uh, very, very high. So we, we have a tough road to hoe ahead, and, but we I know we're up to the task and, and we'll do this together. So um, before I get started, um, I want to um, introduce, I do have some of my staff on the phone, uh, on the webinar uh, with us. My, uh, Dan Ackle is on the phone. Our budget director, Fred Van Dorp, is, is also uh, on and available for questions uh, here in a little bit. I believe my communications director, Jenny Banks, along with my both my deputy general counsels, uh, David Mersars and Emily Chrysler are also on the phone. So uh, uh, they're here and available to you uh, as well. And then I think we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have some a couple special guests. Uh, our state examiner, Paul Joyce, I invited him uh, to be on the phone. I, I know the questions that Debbie forwarded to me yesterday, there was a couple on there that the State Board of Accounts uh, can help answer. Uh, and then uh, the um, Director of Audit Services, Debbie Gibson, is also, I believe, on the call with us today as well. So um, but before we before we jump in right right into the q and A, I'd I'd like I'd like to just highlight a couple uh, resources for the for you as, as township trustees and township board members, any of the other administrative staff of the township that may be on the call. Um, we have done, uh, I think, a, a very good job of, of getting our website up and running when it comes to COVID-19 information. So if you if you go to our website and that even at the State Board of Accounts website, uh, our D DLGF website is in.gov. Uh, backslash DLGF. So that's in.gov backslash DLGF. And if you pull that up, you'll find right at the very beginning uh, information about COVID-19, uh, FAQs, uh, memos, guidance memos. Um, you'll also find our contact information. So we've tried to make it as easy as possible right, right off the bat when you open up our website to find the information that's pertinent to townships and, and your taxpayers and, and your citizens. So um wanted to highlight that. Um, website is when you log on to our website, one of the first the first thing it's going to ask you is uh, if you'd like to be notified of our weekly emails. And if you're not getting those emails, I would encourage you to enter your so um, let's see. Um, I think that's really some, most of the housekeeping um, that I had uh, uh, to, to get us started. So, um, uh, Debbie, I'll turn it over to you uh, for, you know, really start the Q&A and, and uh, see if we can uh, get some questions answered. If we can't answer the questions today, we'll certainly uh, get back to you. And this is, this is not necessarily the, the only uh, webinar we will hold. We do this on a weekly basis with AIM, uh, the Association of Cities and Towns. Uh, the Association of Indiana Counties. Um, so uh, as I've mentioned to Debbie uh, before, uh, we're available to you anytime you need us. So Debbie, you want to get us started off with the, the first question? Debbie, you're still muted. First, I want to say thank you to Tamara for setting this up with Purdue Extension. Really appreciate that, Tamara. Um, I am not as inclined as I like to be technologically, so thank you. And thank you, Wes, of course, for, um, for being here with us today. And as far as the questions go, if you could speak broadly to the capital improvement plan, there are a lot of questions on that as far as timeline, as far as making the one-time transfer. Uh, we had several people send in questions surrounding that subject. Okay. Uh, let me let me see if, if if Fred or Dave could could take this. Um, it, well, first before they jump on, Debbie, did you have any specific questions about the the capital improvement plan or uh, general? Um, if you could give a general, you know, overview for those that are not quite up to speed, but I know one of the specific questions was if they just meet one of the qualifying um, standards within the statute, 
Do they go forward with the plan or must they meet all of those, um, those guiding standards? Okay. So, so the Can dollar I have one? limit. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, if, if someone from the, either the legal team or Fred, if you want to jump in here and try to answer that. Oh, this is Dave. Um, in the, and we provided guidance on this, I think several times during last budget, kind of like go around last year when the laws were first adopted. In the case of the capital improvement plans, it is both 150% and 200,000. Both those thresholds have to be met. Was there a second part to that question? Dave, could you, um, if you have a chance, could you, could you possibly reference the, uh, or the date of the memo or the guidance that we issued? Uh, we had put, well, we provided a legislative memo, I believe in July of last year. Okay. Um, regarding House Enrolled Act 1177. And it does talk about the, the thresholds. It basically just references the statute saying that it is, um, a township is required to do a capital improvement plan if the um, the capital improvement fund balances exceed 150 percent and 200 thousand uh, dollars and that and means it both has to be met if it is or it means one or the other but is not in statute says it has to be and now that being said a township may do a capital improvement plan um, may do a capital improvement plan even if those those thresholds aren't met but the law says they have to if both of those are met okay in your guidance that you've already given on the capital improvement plan have you updated it to include the changes that came about with house bill 1065 this year i believe it was 1065 we are working on legislative memos, uh, including, um, I don't know if it was 1065 or 1113, but it does, we will be providing guidance on the changes with, res with respect to the capital improvement plans and the transfers. Um, I do know that it, the transfer deadline has been extended. They can, townships can do it um, up to September 1st, 2021. As a result of new legislation, also the uh, reduction in tax levies does not apply. Uh, okay. Did the date change for the deadline to create and submit your capital improvement plan? Is it yeah, still due? With, yes. Is is the capital improvement plan still due in conjunction? with the 2021 budget, or is that also pushed forward a year? Yes, that's correct. Well, it, I'm sorry, Dave, let me, let me, is it, is it due this year or has it been extended to next year? Yeah, it has been extended to September 1st, 2021. That's what I was referring to earlier. I, I was mistaken. Okay. It's not the capital improvement plan. It's the, uh, one-time transfers, the capital improvement plan has to be due no later than September 1st, 2021. Okay. okay. Does that help, Debbie? Yeah. Um, next question. The pre-budget worksheet has been extended to May 30th, 2020. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are any of the 2021 budget-related matters or additional appropriation deadlines going to be extended? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, it, it it's not likely that the additional appropriation process we will only have this one time extension of the Wes. I think you're cutting in and out a little survey. bit. Survey. So, um, so I, I I think the Okay. Wes? Uh, 
let, let me uh, let, let me turn this over to uh, to Fred. Then maybe Fred Fred could be. Yeah, Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yeah, Tamara, ask Fred to, to try to answer that question, please. Fred, are you on and able to unmute? I am. Okay, you, I think uh, Wes is having some, some bandwidth issues. Would you be able to answer the, Debbie's question? Yes, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Can you repeat that, Fred? Oops, sorry, that two came in at the same time. Do you need me to repeat the question? Yes, please. If cuts are made to, oh, sorry, the pre-budget worksheet has been extended to May 30th, 2020. Are any of the 2021 budget related matters or additional appropriation deadlines going to be extended? Okay. Not that we're aware of. Uh, as far as we know now, the, the, the remaining deadlines are gonna, re are gonna continue in force including the additional appropriations. So as units are considering doing additional appropriations, we're still, we've released two sets of memos, uh, just confirming that it is still the department's expectation that at some point during the course of the year that the additional appropriation process will be completed as, as, as normal. So the, the position the department has taken is that the executive order will facilitate your ability to spend funds, but it doesn't eliminate the need to do an additional appropriation. So units will, uh, following guidance from the public access counselor, will still need to uh, complete any requisite advertising or meeting requirements in order to complete an additional appropriation throughout the rest of the year. Okay. Uh, Debbie, if I may add to that, um, there was an executive order uh, that the governor issued, uh, executive order 2012, that did extend deadlines for establishing a fire territory and for establishing uh, cumulative funds. Uh, those are both extended up to June 30th of this year. That's June 30th. Okay. Debbie, um, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Yes. This is Wes. So let, let me, let me, let me, um, let me ask Dave and Fred to also, I think I saw a um, question in the chat box. Do, do we consider rainy day funds to be capital funds? And I think there was also a question about a CUME fire fund being considered capital. How do we classify those gentlemen um, from, a, from a capital standpoint, both rainy day and I think I know the answer, but, but if you could uh, share, share the answers to that question, please. As we are trying to make the determination as to whether or not a township needs to complete a capital improvement plan, there are two distinct numbers that we are going to, that we're going to consider. One is the amount of certified budgets for all funds. The second number are the cash balance associated with all funds other than township assistance and your debt funds. So the one of the two totals we're going to use just you can go out to your certified budget order. Every fund that's included on there, the department is gonna consider that as one, of the, as one of our two pieces of the calculation. But when we're talking about the cash that you have, the cash associated with your debt funds or the cash that's associated with your township assistance fund aren't, aren't counted towards those capital projects. Very good. There's a... The, earlier this year, on February 11th, the, I'll put a link in the I'll put a link into the chat box. The department re-released our memos and our templates for the capital improvement plans from last year. Um, I would they are they they are in Excel, but they will sort of they are designed to assist you in making the determination of whether uh, whether or not you qualify you'll see that once you select your, your county and your township and you add the, the, the current date, it will default all the information that we are currently considering from a budget standpoint. And if you follow the, the highlights in yellow, it'll let you know which cash balances we are interested in to, in order to make the determination of, as to whether or not you qualify. I'll put links to all four into the, into the chat box now. Um, Thanks, next, Fred. to the next question. <clears throat> if cuts are made to township funding, is it likely in 2021 or more likely in 2022, based on the current recent events, um, that we will see cuts to our budgets 
what were the results of two township finances in the wake of the 2008 downturn. Um, I, I think they're wanting you to relate what we're expecting to experience to what we've gone through. Yeah, De Debbie, I'll take this one. Um, I, I, you know, I was around uh, in 2008 and um, fiscal officer for my for my town, and it it was it was a drastic cut. Um, we're still we're still gathering information as to what the reductions in revenue are going to look like, uh, and I would say that it's going to span uh, not only this year in 2020 uh, in, in some fashion, maybe not at the township level but certainly at the county and city and town level with MVH funds, motor vehicle highway funds, local road and street funds, uh, casino, food and beverage, uh, innkeepers tax, those, those miscellaneous revenues that, um, uh, that are being collected through uh, market segments that are virtually shut down right now. So, um, so it's gonna hurt in 20, it's gonna hurt in 21 and even into 21, 22 and 23, depending on how quickly we can come back. Um, your your property taxes, as you know, there's a there's a year lag. Um, the assessments that the assessment of the form eleven assessment values that were just sent out that you probably received on your property uh, that you may own uh, now uh, are, are are for payable next year, and so th we th that were assessments from last year. So. Uh, assessed values from last year. So that means that there, there's going to be a, a year or two or even a three-year lag on some of these property tax reductions because we're still seeing values going up last year, uh, 20, 2019, saw a pretty healthy increase across the board, um, in, especially in residential uh, and, uh, and a lot of commercial properties. So, um, But at the same time, that's going to generate probably a lot of appeals from taxpayers. So it's a mixed bag right now, uh, but I would say, and, and oh, by the way, when someone referenced, I think the 2008 was referenced in the question, uh, we, we uh, I, that was early stages of Gateway, and so uh, we're going, we've already started the process of trying to see what kind of revenue uh, information we have uh, going back to 2008. Um, it may be on paper, it may be in the Gateway, so we're, we're still formulating that. So. Stay tuned for that, but expect a. Um, I would I would anticipate if I were in in the fiscal office shoes, the fiscal officer shoes that I was back in 2008, I would expect anywhere from a 15 to a 25 percent reduction in my revenue. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that that we that we don't we don't cut budgets. We we help you balance them. So. Um, it will be uh, a balancing act to get your balance, to get your budgets balanced, and that's what our field reps are there to help you do, is to develop a budget for 2021 uh, based on as, as good of information as we have to get your balance, get your budget balanced as part of your uh, budget process. Wes, so that's a long-winded answer to a to a to a to a short question. So, Wes, do you? Do you want to also comment on uh, how it'll affect MLGQ? Because that could be out sure. later. Um, you know, that's, um, again, that is down the road too, Tamara, as, as you know, uh, you and Dr. DeVore uh, 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 work with us on that. Uh, and uh, uh, MLGQ, uh, the former, uh, what, what was the, I can't even remember the old acronym now, Tamara, what, um, AVGQ. AVGQ. <laughs> yeah, thank you. AVGQ. MLGQ is 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 going to be affected, um, but again, because local income tax is part of that calculation, um, it's it's still too early to tell. But if you can imagine, if you've got a fifteen to twenty percent unemployment rate, which I, from what I understand, we're going to be getting numbers tomorrow morning that. Uh, that indicate that there's going to be a sizable um, increase in unemployment. You can imagine that that local income tax number is going to have a dramatic effect on the uh, a MLGQ. So, but again, that's down the road. Um, the high and low of that calculation is, is taken out. So uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, minimize that and get people back to work as quickly as possible and, and, and minimize the impact of the MLGQ. Oh, Wes, on that subject, with um, 
local income taxes. What would you estimate to be the lag time as far as when we will see the hit in our distribution or our shares? Yeah, uh, Debbie, that, that's going to be anywhere from six to 18 months because, again, that depends on the, the, the amount of filers, uh, the number of filers, and, and how much they file for. So uh, that process is, is, is constantly ongoing. So, uh, um, so uh, again, Fred, you might, if, if you correct me if I'm mistaken, but, but we're looking at a, uh, probably more like a 12 to 24 month period of time where that's going to have an effect um, before the, that starts having an effect. Okay. Would the DLGF suggest we tax our levy to our max if possible to help with forward funding if revenues in the future will decrease? Yes. That was a, a short answer. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, what is the deadline this year for submitting an additional appropriation to your department? Deadline hasn't changed. So, uh, Fred, could could you give us the exact deadline, please? Wes is correct. There is no deadline for submitting additional appropriations to the department. With the new online additional appropriation application, we will be collecting and processing additional appropriations all the way through December 31st of the year. The only thing to keep in mind is that you may have a certified budget order that could be impacted by any additional appropriations that you are doing after you receive it. Very good. Yeah, so in other words, De Debbie, I, I would, uh, I've always encouraged uh, uh, I think the best practice is, is to wait as long as possible, but don't wait too long. So, so sometime in the late third quarter, early fourth quarter, uh, again, emphasizing what Fred just said, that if, if, you, if you adopt your budget for 2021 and then you do an additional appropriation, it, it's gonna, you're going to have a possible negative effect uh, on your 2021 budget. So, so um, again, your field rep, your budget field rep is available to you for for any kind of uh, help with the mechanism of, of applying for that uh, online. Uh, and uh, I can certainly have a discussion with any township trustee that wants to uh, talk about the timing of that. Okay. Um, like to move on to a new subject under the CARES Act and the money that some townships are receiving, federal funds and the hoops that they have to jump through. They're primarily receiving them at this point for township fire and EMS operations. Um, first of all, do they need to appropriate those funds? I might, I might punt this one to uh, Paul and, and Debbie if they're, if they're on. Hi there. Um, hi, Debbie. Oh. When you receive federal funds, you do have to put it in a specific fund, but you don't have to appropriate them. They're they're already they're for the specific expense. Most of them, though, you're going are probably through reimbursement. And the last memo we sent out would be where you're moving them out of the fund. Maybe you bought them in and into the federal fund, so you're actually expensing them out of that fund. Is this supposed to be a segregated fund for those revenues? It would be a segregated fund, and that would be because one, it's going to be easy to track, so we can so we can look at it, um, and if any other FEMA people wanted to look at it, that way it's all nicely, easily identifiable, and you know the three words they always use are document, document, document. Mm -hmm. Um, I have been getting quite a few questions regarding um, going after some of the CARES Act uh, funds and people are wanting to know what is involved as far as the federal demands for expenditure tracking. I don't know if anyone is able to answer that. They're right now still just coming out with questions and answers, and I'd be glad to send them to the, the last questions and answers that the Treasury Department sent out. I'll send them to you. You can share them, um, you know, 
with everyone. Uh, we'll also be posting them on our website. Uh, it's once again, they, they have not yet identified whether or not they're subject to what they call the uniform compliance or whether they're going to be subject to the single audit. And each one has different kind of standards that would need to be followed if it was subject to it. So the best thing anybody is saying, and this includes the treasury, is to just document that the expense document why it's a COVID related expense. And if there's any question, get a, your legal, um, you know, your legal opinion and have it attached to it as well. And just attach it to the area, keep it in a file um, so people can look at it. But they're, they're pretty broad as you're seeing on some of the terminologies they're using as far as COVID related expense. I mean, they're, if you can say it was, related to COVID, then it probably is. Um, there's, there's guidance on there that would say that, you know, if, if somebody did lose their job and they applied for, say, assistance because they can't pay their bill and, and you offer that assistance, it would be a COVID-related expense. That being said, that doesn't mean it's a COVID-related expense that will be reimbursed because that's another question after uh, identifying first that it's a COVID related expense. Um, to Wes, why are we seeing this huge increase in property tax assessments? Well, uh, I think that part of the, a large part of it, uh, Debbie, is in regards, it, it's, it's in response to the dramatic uh, increase in, in the market. Uh, we, we, I can tell you what's going on in central Indiana, and that is that, that uh, houses are on the market not for weeks or months, but for literally hours or a few days, and are selling for list plus, list price plus. So uh, on the residential side, it's up until now, it's been a very, you know, we've had low interest rates, uh, and we've had a very hot market with, with the economy, uh, with low unemployment, uh, increases in income, people are upgrading. New, new homes are being built. Uh, and so uh, 2020, 2019 was uh, a very, a very strong year uh, across the board. So you're seeing uh, a five to seven and a half percent across the board increase in uh, residential, commercial and industrial values. Now there are, there are spots where there may be, it may be flat or there may be a very, very small decline, but uh, um, I think, I, as I recall, 92 count, 91 out of 92 counties had a positive increase in their assessed value. So that in and of itself is, is the, uh, and, and the market is, is what's driving that. Uh, again, market value and use, uh, supply and demand uh, is, is dictating the increase in values. And again, you, you can see a smaller increase in, depending on your location or a larger increase. I know here in Hendricks County, uh, it's been the residential property has been a larger increase than just the the, the normal five to seven percent. So I, that, again, that's it's 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 about the market. And um, we're going to go back to talking about the ta township capital improvement plan. Those that have already filed theirs. And now, particularly in light of the disruptions with COVID, the township may need to do interfund loans or transfers, which might have otherwise been for the capital project. Is there a problem with this? <clears throat> Dave, could you take this one, please? We we may we and we may need to get back with you on this on this question, Debbie. Okay. Uh, I can say at this point that after the capital improvement plan has been created, the, the law does allow the township to amend the plan subject to approval from the township board. Very good. Um, that's the end of my list of questions. I believe, Tamara, we were going to open it up in case someone wanted to pop on their um, microphone and ask a question. 
Yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to type into the chat box or if you'd like to unmute yourself, that's fine too. Can someone just ask again, the deadline for the additional appropriation, if I understood correctly, as long as you have received it by December, what would that be, Fred? December, December 31st, Debbie. Um, but again, uh, I caution you to wait, not, not to wait that long. Um, uh, we can help you uh, maybe uh, not necessarily, we can help you with the timing of that. So uh, if you wait till too late in the process, it's going to have a negative impact on your 2021 budget. So, um, you know, it, it's best practice to do it sometime in the middle, late, third quarter, very early in the fourth quarter. Um, so get your cash flows out, um, get your bank recs, uh, you know, uh, done, uh, and, and then you'll, you'll know where your cash balance is, you'll know where your budget is, you'll know where your uh, encumbrances are. Um, so as long as you know those three things, um, we can... You, 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 we can help you with an additional appropriation and running through the process sometime in the late third quarter, early fourth. Okay. Here's a question that just popped up. What if my budget had gotten cut so much this year, myself and my board were looking to take a pay cut. However, due to state law, we see this is not possible. Please explain how we can cut our pay if needed to make it through our year. That might be SBOA. You know, I, I might kick this one to, or Paul might need to supplement my answer here, but I don't believe that elected officials can cut their, can cut their pay during the, um, during the current calendar year. And I believe. We did. Yeah. So, I, so Paul, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, elected officials are not allowed to reduce their pay in the given year. Oh my God. Even if you did it, you're still not supposed to. So, <laughs> uh, but that being said, they can donate it back. Um, yeah, I, and I've heard that's not uncommon. It is not. But if you do do that donation, then there are the, still the tax consequences. So that's to keep in mind as well. Correct. Um, can you speak to requests for early draws for December funding if we see a decrease in our June draws due to the extended tax deadline? You're muted, Wes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Debbie. I, I'll take this one. The, um, I've had several conversations with the Auditors Association and uh, they are working to try to come up with a, a specific calendar per county um, for, um, for, for, uh, for you to, for you to uh, uh, request these advances. So um, um, check with your county auditor. Uh, check with your surrounding township trustees and their boards and, and Try to come up with a game plan to ask one time. Uh, they are going to make the normal uh, timely distribution in June. Uh, and then as to when the next uh, advance might happen at your local level or at the county level uh, before the December. So they are aware that you're going to be asking, uh, but try to ask as a group uh, in order to minimize the impact as far as workload uh, on the county auditor. Um, this is for Calumet Township. When I'm will, sorry, say that. This is on behalf of Calumet Township. They're asking when they'll be able to proceed with their budget calculations or presentation without Griffith being part of the township. Can we, can we take that one offline, Debbie? Uh, th yeah. That was very... Very specific to them. So if, if Fred needs to, uh, Fred and his team need to uh, 
talk with, with them. If we could do that offline, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one's kind of long. Let me see how we go here. So we cannot have a board meeting and in the meeting say, quote, we elect to not accept a paycheck for this month or we state we are donating our paycheck to the township. I don't want to have to still pay the taxes that the township would have to pay if we wrote the check, then donate it back to the township. During this budget crisis, we'll have to do something. There's no the real no problem way. here, Debbie, huh? is we don't write the law. The law is written how it is. And the law says you're not allowed to lower your pay. And if you, you know, there's not really a way around it. Uh, no, the answer to that is no, you cannot do that. Okay. And good. if you, if you want to do it, then donate the back the part that you're still going to owe taxes on that, that you can keep a certain amount of that. Okay. Um, here's one about local food banks that are needing funding and um, how can we support them without compromising our appropriated assistance budget since we aren't allowed to make donations? I can answer that. Um, I mean, you can do, you, you can't make donations, but you can have a community service contract with uh, a provider of services to your township. Um, and you can contact me for sample contracts and that sort of thing if you'd like to do that. I believe that was from Melissa. For those who have salaried firefighters, fighters, is there a COVID hazard pay available? Debbie, this is one where if you go back up, there's another question on COVID related expenses. All COVID related expenses are going to be reimbursable. Okay, so it's not going to be that you're getting something up front it's going to have to be that either the state or one of the local units is going to have to reimburse for that fund that being said could that be a a, a an expense a hazard yes that's one thing they, they have on there where they can be paid additional but it's only if it's allowed by those or that entity that's reimbursing that expense so just because they say we're going to do hazard pay doesn't mean you're going to get reimbursed for it. Uh, Wes, we asked you about guidance on House Bill 1065, and mm -hmm. they are wondering the timing of that guidance when we might be able to look for that. Debbie, we're we're. I think we're close. Um, I'm hoping to have that uh, by by sometime this month. Um, so we're I know that we're working on it. And I think we're pretty close. So um, Dave or uh, Emily, did did you have a? Um, uh, I don't want to throw you under the bus here. Uh, so if 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 my timing is off on that, please speak up because I, I know this is important to the townships. Hey Wes, this is Dan, Chief of Staff, General Counsel at the Department. For everybody else, um, we have drafts of our legislative memos coming out of the 2020 session uh, prepared. We're still going through those, uh, getting them out. Th those are prepared by the attorneys, but we're getting them out to the applicable staff to ensure that uh, they don't see any issues or, or making sure that they're correct before we uh, get them out finally. So I think I agree with your statement that they will likely be out sometime this month. Thanks, Dan. We we had a we had a very large bill uh, last year as we normally do uh, anyway, and so it's it's going to be a rather extensive, uh, um, uh, it's a very large document. So, but thanks for your patience on that. I, we know how critical that is uh, to local townships, and and uh, we're we're pushing that through as quickly as possible. Thanks for your patience on that. I believe uh, this was answered already, but um, 
we'll answer it again. Does the money received from the CARES provider relief fund required an appropriation to spend the money? And I believe Paul Joyce said, no, it does not require a, an appropriation, but full accounting is expected. I hope I said that right, Paul. You did say it right, and and they need to remember it's it's going to be in a reimbursable form, so it's not like you're going to get it. Anybody's going to get a lump sum, and then you account for it. It's going to be you're going to submit a claim, and then that money is going to be reimbursed. That's at least how it's set up right now. Um, Wes, our budget workshops plan to go on as normal or shall we expect adjustments to that procedure such as dates or whether or not it's in person? Yeah, uh, we're, we're, um, we're talking about that today, Debbie. Uh, I've got a meeting uh, almost, uh, well, shortly after lunch, I think at one o'clock internally to talk about that. And we've already been talking about it up to this point. I think the short answer is that, that we are not going to, it's not going to look like it did last year. I think is we're going to do this as remotely as we possibly can. Uh, that's out of an overabundance of caution for the safety of not only my staff, but of your staff uh, and everyone involved. So we're going to, um, we, we haven't got all the particulars. Uh, we're, we're, we're gonna stick to the calendar, um, uh, but as, to, as far as whether it's gonna be in person or not, we're, we're still working through those details, but we're gonna stick to the calendar. Let, let me let me add to that, Debbie. It's it's going to be critical to 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 your success, to the township trustees and the township board's success for next year's budgeting process is to is to continue to to do the best practices and the internal controls that you have in place currently with in regards to your um, in regards to your bank accounts in regards to your encumbrances and your accounts receivables and accounts payables. Um, so it's really, really critical that, that you keep those. In, in, and I know it's a very difficult situation uh, do, to do it remotely, but, uh, but ask your bank for help. Ask your, if you have a, a financial advisor, ask them for help, counsel. Um, we'll certainly be a resource for you as, as best we can, uh, but it's important to keep your uh, financials up to date uh, so that, that when you walk in uh, and do the pre-budget survey that's open now, um, schedule that meeting with your uh, field rep when they contact you. Um, we can do a lot of this remotely. A lot of the pre-budget survey uh, is, 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 um, is helping us to do this remotely. So um, take advantage of the tools that you have in place. If, if you're struggling with some tools, I know that the Library Association has made uh, hardware and software available to uh, local taxing units uh, that might have some um, uh, technology issues. Uh, uh, so uh, again, don't hesitate to reach out to your other local units of government um, if and when uh, you feel that you need to uh, uh, need some help. Great. And um, speaking of getting help, Tamara, I wondered if you might want to put a link to the site for the extension um, where you have collected resource materials. I'm not sure everyone's familiar with that, but I thought they might want to look it up. Um, let's see. Um, do you ex Wes, do you expect a reduction in growth quotient? for the 2021 budget. There we go. I think you can hear me now. I know I do not. Um, uh, we don't know what that number is going to be, but um, it's too early for there to be an effect uh, on the um, on the MLGQ uh, going into 2021, but you will see that in 2022 and, and, and beyond. Mm -hmm. With that, I have um, come to the end of all questions that have been submitted. Um, we have just a couple more minutes. If anyone has an additional question for the DLGF team, um, now is a good time to go ahead and submit that. Um, Debbie, while I'm while while we're waiting for those, I want to take a, a second again to um, to uh, extend my appreciation to not only you and and. Uh, 
uh, the team there at ITA, but uh, all the trustees. Um, um, we've uh, we, we appreciate the relationship and we appreciate everything that the, the trustees and the board uh, advisory board members are doing. Uh, continue the good work again on behalf of Governor Holcomb and the rest of the team. Uh, thanks for all you do. And uh, also uh, shout out to my um, colleagues at uh, State Board of Accounts, uh, Auditor of State, uh, the Indiana Bond Bank, uh, the level of communication and the uh, amount of uh, collaboration that's been going on over the last two months uh, has been remarkable and, and uh, we're uh, certainly proud of the efforts that you guys are doing and, and what we're doing to help you. So thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Debbie, this is Debbie Gibson with State Board of Accounts and there's been the questions about payroll and so I just wanted to um, provide the IC code and a little bit of a caveat to that. So it can be found where it's fixed under IC 36-6-6-10 and in subsection D it does say subject to um, subsection E um, the township legislative body may reduce the salary of an elected or appointed official, but it can't be less than that in the prior year. However, the legislative body may not alter the salaries of an elected or appointed officer during the fiscal year for which they are fixed. So I thought that might be helpful that they could have that clearly in writing where that's spelled out for them. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, one other question just came in. Will we lose tax money if we transfer large amounts from the, the general fund, general township fund to rainy day fund for CIP? I'm sorry, Debbie, was that directed to me? I'm sorry, I think so. Uh, would you repeat that, please? Yes. Will we lose tax money if we transfer large amounts from general township fund to rainy day fund for CIP? Uh, well, I'm going to either need to have Fred take that or we're going to need to get back to you. Okay. Fred, Fred, could, is, do we have an answer for that? Yeah, the, um, under the old language, the reduction was made if you transferred into a fund that had a max levy, transfers into the rainy day would have no financial impact on your, on your ability to levy in the current year. Just double checking to see if there are any other questions here. All right, and before everybody gets away from here, um, and while we get ready to close, just want to point out that as far as we know, we're going forward with the 2020 ITA Educational Conference, which will be held in September from the 20th to the 23rd at the Sheraton at Keystone Crossing once again. And if you would like to be involved in the plans for that, please just shoot me an email, let me know, and we'll get you included in the planning. Um, yesterday, you should have received an email that, um, that uh, gave you some direction on salaries, and I believe tomorrow you'll receive another email that will address the question, what do I do if I'm running out of money? Um, what are your options? And those will be laid out for you. And so if you are not receiving our emails, um, please contact me so we can check on that. But um, you can expect that. Um, let's see. I think that that is it, Wes and team. Debbie, we're uh, again, thank you. Yes, thank you, Wes, and, and all the rest of you that joined in to yep. call. Thank you, um, Debbie, Dan, Fred. 
Um, and again, our thanks to Tamara Ogle and the folks at Purdue Extension for allowing us this opportunity. While we were on here, I had several people um, text me or message me and say that we ought to do this more often. So um, we'll look into doing that sort of thing um, so that you can ask your questions in real time and hear back from the experts. So Debbie? with that, I thank you. Mm -hmm. Debbie, could I say something, please? Mm -hmm. I just want to tell everybody, thank you for, uh, like Wes said, you know, for working through all this, but not only for what you're doing, but we did a lot of audits on townships while we were, uh, our people were out at home through remote settings and just want to tell you that we appreciate all the um, efforts that the trustees did to help get that done. Yeah. All right. And nice I, work, everyone. And this has been recorded. Thank you, Tamara. And we will be sending that link out to everyone and posting that on our website, as well as the site that Tamara put in the chat for you. Thank you.